All right, guys, so I wanted to show you all this trouble call we're at right now. No power call. It was definitely a head scratcher for a few minutes, but we, we found the problem. And I just want to show you guys what's going on here. So we've got no power call, single customer off this transformer right here behind us. So naturally, my first stop is that transformer itself. We see that the fuse, the cutout, is in the closed position. So we took a walk over to the meter on this place here. This is a 400 amp entrance, so the power is not flowing directly through that meter. There's some CTs in that cabinet, 120, 240 volts, 400 amp. That's where we get the bigger pipe too. And screen is blank, so we've got no power. So right off the bat, figure cutouts closed in, goes across to this pole, underground, into this meter, no power. So, fuse leak's probably blown inside the cutout door, which we've seen a few times in videos. But before taking the stick out and checking that, I did want to make sure the main line was out. There's several other customers off the main line, so it wasn't likely. I can see the cutout feeding the sideline way over here on that streetlight pole. It was closed, and then we went down to a few of these shops down here and checked the meters. Power's on. Even down the road here, power's on in that building. So it's at that point I started scratching my head. We grabbed the Kelly stick, opened that cutout door, brought it down to the ground. The fuse was intact. Even popped it out, did the continuity check, make sure the fuse link wasn't blown inside. It's good. So any of you want to guess what my next check was? I'll turn the camera around. So there is a piece of equipment on this pole that could fail with absolutely no signs other than power going out. If anyone wants to take a guess, it would be that current limiting, whoa, what happened to my screen? There we go. That current limiting fuse. This guy right here, once those fail, they basically just glass up. Power doesn't go through into the transformer. The only way to tell is to do a continuity check on it. So I took the potential indicator, put it on top of that current limiting fuse, see if there's power going into that, and there wasn't. But then when I checked the overhead line, we had power. Power in these wires, no power going into the current limiting fuse or the transformer. So it's the cutout, right? So I started scratching my head a little more, and then, I noticed that lead going in the top. Oh, we're getting a little squirrely here. Let's come around to this angle here. I didn't set my truck up and go up in the air because access was not exactly easy. We're out on the lawn here a little bit. Now from this angle, the feed to that cutout, we look at the lead, and it jumped right out of the cutout. There's where we lost power. Goes to the stirrup tap clamp around that lead and that lead does not go into the cutout so I did give it a tug with the stick from the ground that's why there's a little bit bigger of a gap there now but uh, yeah that was that was a tricky one those usually don't just fall out or burn out like that so that's on the high voltage side I need a hand to fix that the foreman was not too far away he's gonna stop by be my second man on site this one's going to be tricky, it's going to be close. That cutout is within our two foot one inch to the 7200 volts, even when we untap it. So we're going to have our 20 kVs on at all times. I think this would be a good job. It's a pretty quick job, but we'll throw the helmet cam on and uh, talk our way through the process, what we're looking at as we go. We could de-energize that overhead if we have to. It'll only knock out a few more customers. I don't think we will need to go that far. A couple other points I wanted to cover before my foreman shows up. My truck here, something I keep on board, which is super handy. We always have outrigger pads, of course. I don't haul this guy out much, but when you're on soft ground, it comes in handy, helps disperse the weight a lot better. The ground's not too awful soft. You can see my tires didn't break through the grass, just kind of laid it down. But the mat does have a pretty good bend to it. We got a lot of weight on that. We're on a we're on a pretty good slope here. So what's important when you're setting up your truck is you check your angles. So we've got this on most of our boom trucks, if not all of them. 
we've got to be within five degrees. We're at four. So we just got enough here. And we'll check the truck this way. We're almost at zero degrees. I could jack up this leg on this side a little more to get that right at zero. But if I do, I'm gonna lose a little bit more on my, my front end here. So set up good there. That large outrigger pad along with this guy here that's usually tucked in behind against the wall there. Two things I don't use very often, but when I do, man, do they ever come in handy. So I'm gonna get a few more tools and rubber gloves and sticks out while we're waiting. So the foreman's here now. We had a tailboard and finished loading up some material in the truck. I just cut all that footage out. But the reason I keep looking back at my lower boom, I'm directly below those wires. Wasn't an ideal spot. The ground slopes off pretty quick there. But if you can get your lower boom straight up and down, you generally don't have to worry about it too much when you're swinging left and right once you're in the work position. So I'm trying to get that lower boom all the way up and then I'll use my squirt, my extension, to maneuver in and out near the pole once, once that lower boom is fully vertical. So the first thing we're gonna do is open the cutout, even though there's no power flowing through it. We're still gonna open that. That way the top and bottom portion isn't connected as we try and remove that tap clamp. We don't want that wire bouncing against that cutout trying to pick up a customer, trying to pick up load, which I'm assuming it will bounce around a little bit as we get going here. So we put our grab all on and try to haul it away from the top of the cutout so it isn't bouncing, even though that cutout is isolated now. There is still one hazard, however, is the lightning arrestor. That lead isn't long enough to hit the cutout bracket, which would be very bad, but that that's how that tap lamp seized right on. Wanna grab me uh, hotline cutters? So I'm gonna get some hotline cutters and, to cut uh, that lead right off. Even though that lightning arrestor is designed to take high voltage, I don't wanna be repeatedly energizing, right on the energizing back wall. it with that lead bouncing off it. So we're gonna cut that clear off. And we'll give it a try again here in a second. Right on. Thanks, I'm man. I'm assuming that the copper is not going to be in great shape. So we'll get a new piece of number four strand of copper, new stir up, new tap clamp, and we're going to be changing yeah. that cut out as well. I didn't have a lightning rester on board. Nowadays, the lightning rester is always located right on the transformer. So when you're tapping leads on, you're not picking up that lightning rester. But that's an older transformer, and like I said, I don't have a lightning arrestor on board. So we will change that cutout, get rid of that porcelain cutout. But what we're doing here now, we're using our tested six foot bolt cutters. We'll cut that lead clean off. You can see how I grabbed that lead. Those cutters, for whatever reason, when you cut something, if, if you hold the lever in place, you can bring it right to you and remove it in the bucket. But we're not near any roadways where it can bounce into traffic or anything. So moving forward here, as I cut a few things off, I just let it fall to the ground. There's there's no hazard in doing that in this particular scenario. I did want to try that pack plant one last time because where it is a press on stir up, even though I can cut the tap clamp in the bottom portion off, there's no way to fully remove it from the line. So I did attempt to remove that tap clamp one last time once I had a little bit more clearance and it, it was seized on solid. So we're just gonna cut it off here now with these lever action bolt cutters, which like all of our hot sticks, they are tested annually at our head office and you must inspect their condition for each and every use, like any of your lifeline equipment. So again, just let the, the tap clamp in the bottom portion start fall to the ground. If you're ever working near a roadway, even though no one's near the bottom of the pole, you may think it's safe to let stuff drop like that. Once it hits a sidewalk or something, it could bounce out in the traffic. So don't don't let stuff fall like that if you're working out in traffic or along the road. So now that we've got that cut out open and the pack cleared, we're gonna eliminate any possible chance of back feed. It's only hooked onto that one customer over there. There's a few ways to eliminate back feed on the secondary side. A lot of times guys will pull the meters, but where that's a 400 amp entrance, if we pull the meter, that's gonna simply disconnect it from the CTs. If there was a generator in there, it still would back feed, meter pulled or not. So in this case, we're gonna use our secondary grounds. We'll just do a quick voltage check. 
I don't use my proximity indicator here because we'd have it on the 120 volt setting where that primary is energized at 7200 volts. There's a good chance that 120 volt setting will go off being in such close proximity to that high voltage. So we're just going to use our voltmeter, 20 kV rubber gloves, and check voltage right on the lugs here, which we get zero, which I fully expected. And then simply use our jumper cables to short out that neutral and that hot. That way, if there was any type of back feed whatsoever, once, once there's back feed coming in through the 120 volt side, it will step up at the same ratio, at that 60 to one ratio that the voltage steps down to, it'll step up right up to 7200 volts. So if you were even to plug in an extension cord and touch that on those secondary leads, you're gonna get 7200 volts come out the top bushing and we are gonna be hands on that lead when we change that cutout. So we put those grounds on to eliminate any chance whatsoever of any stray voltage, any back feed, back feeding up through that transformer creating a hazardous situation. see a few moments ago when I squeezed underneath that neutral a lot of times you can lift that neutral up and over your sticks but she was a little bit tight so going back through I just took both sticks out and laid them down across my bucket make it a little easier to squeeze through so this part she's close uh, that primary is energized 7200 volts so we're gonna be working a little bit different here I'll kind of talk through that as I go the closest portion is that lead going to the lightning raster you can see I keep my, my speed wrench here down low. I'm not doing full rotation, swinging it up near that primary. I'm trying to keep as much clearance as possible. I have my head, my body in excess of two foot one inch, which is our minimum clearance, other than for our rubber gloves, which are tested. We're gonna clip that guy clear and just tuck that in and cut out. The whole time I'm working, I'm keeping everything down and away from that high voltage. We do have some cover up. The reason I didn't use cover up here, I could put a hard piece of cover up and slide it up as far as that dead end clamp. I would have to use one of my larger pieces to cover the dead end portion. And that large piece would actually hang down into my work area and actually touch that cutout. So instead we're gonna to opt to use all manual tools here. That nut was on there real tight. But I didn't wanna use the, the Milwaukee impact gun there because it would start breaking my clearances between that L bracket, which is just dead short, and in between that and up in the primary. So we're just gonna be using hand tools throughout this entire job. Changing the cutouts, pretty straightforward. We've seen it in many videos now. You can see when I lifted it off, as soon as it cleared that nut, I pulled it away. You're not gonna aggressively lift it up when you're that, that high voltage. When I put the new cutout on here, I don't tighten it all the way because I wanted to swing the cutout towards me when I put that lighting rest or lead in, giving myself a little bit more clearance from the high voltage. A lot of times what I'll do, as you can see here, I swing it out in the way for working on the top here. But what I'll do a lot of times is I'll actually swing away from the primary, which is what I'm doing here now to put the tap clamp on the lead. And I'll put the wire right in the cutout, right from my bucket here, and then put it on the L bracket. In this case, where we're using that same lightning arrestor, we're gonna be making those main connections on the top of the cutout on the, on the structure itself. So we just, we have to be extremely conscientious of our positioning throughout this job, being in such close proximity to that high voltage. My foreman, which is a certified a journeyman lineman, he's paying very close attention as I work this entire time. So whenever you're doing a job like this, you're not going to be in the truck doing paperwork or working on emails. So you've got a guy up working near the high voltage like this, and your second man is on the job watching your each and every move. So when you're in the field, guys, doing this stuff, even if you're you're an apprentice and you have a real experienced guy up in the air, you're watching. If you see him doing something where you may think he's not aware of his clearances or he's got a tool swinging around, he's getting a little close, don't be scared to shout out. I mean, don't start freaking out yelling and 
cause a, cause an accident, but don't be scared to shout out a quick reminder. Hey, uh, don't forget that's energized or you're getting a little close there. So again, we're just gonna snug these guys up with the hand tools, keeping the tool itself and my hands down and away from that high voltage. And I'm using the wrong side of my speeder. You see that little hole in the center of that Milwaukee uh, speed wrench there? That's uh, both ends of that wrench are isolated from each other. So, I mean, I wouldn't go sticking it in 7200 volts, but if you're working on low voltage stuff and you hit the back side of it onto a dead short, it's there's no continuity between both ends of that tool. So we're gonna tighten this guy up and I'm actually gonna leave it angled towards me a little bit. It's gonna make this cut out a whole lot easier to operate in the ground where it's not directly over top of that neutral wire. So we see there's a whole lot of orange going on in my bucket today. We're actually trying out a new tool apron from Linework Bucket Products. We get it loaded right up with some Milwaukee tools and we've got the socket pocket here on the go. It's it's my first time using hey, it. Awesome, great to meet you, Tal. Nice to meet you. Aaron, great to meet you, Landon. Nice to meet you, Aaron. This just came out a couple days ago. This is the socket pocket. It's got six socket holsters in there that fit combo sockets that Klein and Milwaukee have been kicking out. It also has two auger bit holes at the top. We got a hook at the bottom that's good for your money gun and a magnet face that you can hold a quick uh, quick spot for your nice. lines or any washers or lock nuts. Nice. And unfortunately during this clip, the audio was completely botched. So that's why I faded, faded the audio out here. But it's our first time using these products. At first glance, I do gotta agree with the quality is awesome. The socket pocket, it's a one-time buy, you buy it for life. The tool apron, excellent quality. I will definitely be trying that out over the next few weeks and I'll give you guys some more feedback on that in the near future. I'll also drop some links. It's not available on the market yet, but it is available for pre-order. So if you guys wanna check that out, that's Linework Bucket Products. Now that copper, it was a little bit corroded, nothing too serious. That's why I just kind of brushed it up with my Milwaukee knife a little bit, just kind of scratched it up. Get some fresh shiny copper there. You don't want to over torque these connections on cutouts or any switches. You can use your impact gun on them, but you don't want to take a high torque impact gun and go wide open and just snap those fellas right off. It's pretty good practice, really, just to tighten those ones up by hand, actually. So we've pretty well got everything in place here now. We'll hang that door by hand before that leads on, so we don't have to mess around with the stick doing that. Another good practice, in, in fact, it's, it's actually a work method in most cases. Before you start tapping any leads on, you want to make sure all grounds and all bonds are removed. I do have yet to put the stirrup on. I like doing that last because you get in a position where you're working with your sticks, you're putting the stirrup on. You don't want to get complacent and then move on to the tap clamp or the lead and carry on with stick work. So I try to keep all my stick work at the end once once all the grounds and bonds are removed so we will remove these now paying special attention to remove the hot side first and then the neutral so I'll pop off the hot pop off the neutral put those guys away and now we can swing back over and put our stir up and our lead on to get that cut out and closed in So I do notice looking at the ACSR, that's 2 out ACSR, it's pretty grey looking. I'm not normally too awful worried about brushing it when, it when it's newer ACSR, but there there is a whole layer of oxidization and corrosion on, on that wire, it is pretty old. So we're going to scuff up a bit. I hate to use my knife for this, I don't, I don't have a, a stick brush in my truck right now, but a great idea actually Maddie has some really great products for stick attachments for brush and overhead conductor. They, they've got a few different options for stick attachments and all of their options do have removable brushes. You just take a little Allen key in the end and you can pop one of these new guys in the end. So 
definitely pick up those, one of those up for your truck. These stirrups, the, the reason we put those on, we don't put the tap clamp directly on the ACSR. Where the tap clamp is installed using your grab ball, it's it's not the best connection. It does it is exposed to the elements and the difference in metals, so there could be some corrosion. These stirrups, they're like four inches wide. They're just Man, loaded with penetrox inside. And it covers quite a bit of surface area on the wire when you make the connection. So they don't generally fail. And once you install them, you can really tighten these guys up. You're not gonna be pulling them off and on all the time. In fact, this is a newer style. We used to have to put a ratchet wrench in the end of our stick and tighten, tighten the nut on. I'll have to show you guys that one of these days because they were a real pain in the butt compared to these ones. You can use your grab all to install. But basically, if, if this high voltage connection ever fails, it'll most likely fail between the stirrup and the tap clamp itself and not result in burning the wire down to the ground. So worst case scenario, the tap clamp burns, the lead falls off and there's an outage, but there's, there's, no, there's no danger, there's no safety issues or danger to the public when that happens. So we've got our stirrup on and now we're gonna move into position. I'm just gonna move as far away as I can because we are going to be energizing that lightning arrestor again, which is a high resistance path to ground. There is a very small chance it could fail. If it does, you don't want to be anywhere near that. That's that's why I much prefer, and most companies do install those lightning arrestors on the transformer now. So you're a long ways from the pole when you close it with your, when your long stick. When you close that cut, it'll energize that lightning arrestor. Tighten those tap clamps also, once once it's all the way tight, you want to shake the stick around a little bit, give it a little flick, make sure that it is fully seated in the jaws of the tap clamp. And again, as we've seen many a times when we close the cutout here, we're not going to be staring at it. I do notice a lot of guys still stare directly at the cutout when they're closing it. It's not usually an issue until it is, but I can tell you after you get a few blow, last thing I want to be doing is staring directly at that cutout when you close that in. So we're just going to pack things up. A little bit of a windstorm. It's already getting windy a little bit here, but uh, they're predicting 100 kilometer an hour winds this weekend. So this is actually the next morning now. I was out till midnight last night. The wind was really picking up. The uh, few calls, but nothing too serious. So we had a good night's sleep, had a chance to put this video together, and I appreciate you guys all stopping in and watching, and we'll see you all soon.